Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 18th episode of Tissues of the Day. I'm David, and I'm hosting solo today because Robert had a thing. Uh, but he will be filled in today by this dead plant. Um, dead plant, do you have anything to say to the lovely <laughs> listeners? Yes, I've been having a wonderful time adjusting to the new role. That's so great, dead plant. Um, I'm going to put you here next to me for moral support, and we are going to welcome our special guest today, Clark Strom. Welcome, Strom. Hi. Strom Clark. How's it going? <laughs> I never refer to you by your last name, but <laughs> I just did there. That's perfect. Uh, it's canon. It can be a thing now. I love it. <clears throat> uh, yeah. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing well. Um, yeah. I I've been uh, doing doing life as as the the, the, the you know COVID is permitting, and um, it's been a very interesting time uh, to say the yeah. least. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. Uh, wow. I know. So related to uh, COVID, this is not the. Oh God. Oh, it's beginning. <laughs> the awkward transitions. Oh, if so, you can, if you can swing a segue out of out of it, of that you can you can make it in the world. Kid. Yeah. yeah. So because of COVID, we did not. I or very few people were able to experience today's uh, theme: summer camps. We're going to be talking about mm. summer camps today mm. because Clark and I met at summer camp. Aww. It's true. It was friends at third sight. It was beautiful. Friends. <laughs> what was the first and second sight? <laughs> Um, I had my eyes on someone else for like two other sightings and I was like, okay, you're good. Yeah. 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 He's good. He's cool. <laughs> he seems to make friends with dead yeah. things. So <laughs> <laughs> he, he might be safe. Yeah. I knew something was up and something was off and that made it um, safe to approach you basically. Yeah. Fair. Fair. Off in, in a, um, in a approachable gosh, way. this is so funny. Hmm. This is so funny just because um, Clark and I have known each other for maybe 11 years now since like Gosh. since 2010. Oh, we must have wow. met in 2010. Yeah. When you say it out loud, it sounds too long, but that's accurate. Yeah. God. Holy. Yeah. yeah. I know. Time flies. So mm. uh, Clark uh, is uh, quite successful. Perhaps I, I could say I, I could venture to say he's successful on TikTok at John Queer Tractor Co. Um, or at Gay Dad Bod on Instagram. Um, if you ever want to check out his stuff, he's very funny and he makes TikToks with his son, who is also very funny. Thank you. Yeah, that's uh, that's the brand. You don't, <laughs> I don't that's know. the brand. <laughs> hey, that's the brand. Finger pistols. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, like, how's that been? <laughs> when did you when did you get into tiktok because i think you were on it before i was on it i think i only started looking yes. at tiktoks in like may 2020 yeah so i began um tiktok as my artistic expression um as a young queer dad and that was <laughs> on my end it sounded like there was uh gas in the back but that was just a motorcycle right or some or some maybe vehicle. It was, maybe it's the chair. This is a squeaky chair. I have the worst chair. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you were just like a young queer dad. Yep. <laughs> and that's what I think about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, um, here, I'll just sit still. Being right. There we go. No chairs. No, chairs, no worries. No. Um, yeah. So I I was. It's funny. I think about everything in kind of relation to how old my son was. And um, mm. so my son was about two years old, so that was 2018. And um, yeah, I found TikTok. I'd, I'd been thinking about sort of like the the Vine idea and like um, you know premise of like you know making videos and just being humorous and having that outlet. And um, yeah, I guess my content just kind of started to click with people. Um, the goofiness and the <laughs> desperate cry for help at the same time. Of oh, for like, sure. Yeah, because like every TikToker, every, if we're being every really honest, one, they all start out with like, "I am deeply lonely," and also, "I think I'm kind of funny." Like, just a little. Yeah, bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even yeah. before COVID, people Absolutely. were using TikTok that way. Yeah. To be complete, like I've been thinking about this a lot, and I'm just like, if you. Uh, create content specifically like videos of 
mostly yourself um there's no way like you're like a hundred percent like good all the time (laughs) and i say this completely about myself like hosting a podcast making lots of videos or whatever Mm. it's just like it comes with the territory anyone who um uh is like yeah this is the thing that i want to spend all my time on as my hobby Mm. um you know it just is what it is it is (laughs) yeah i i do have these moments when i start making a video where i'm like the joke isn't that funny so i might be leaning into the fact that i have some okay genetics and i'm gonna hope okay, yeah, that yeah, that's yeah. gonna tie it in and then i'm like clark no no <laughs> you should you, you're better than that you should make a good joke mm. and do good lighting and do good sound and put in the effort to make the subtitles perfect and do all these things okay and, uh, can yeah. can we talk about the subtitles in tiktok for a second because like oh. the um whatever the video editor is so janky and like there's no way to (sighs) i just find it annoying that in order to do subtitles for myself i have to listen to the tiktok over and over again Mm. to the point where um i just hate it and i'm second guessing everything (laughs) by the time i'm done (laughs) yeah um apparently um i've i've only heard this the rumors are true hopefully Mm -hmm. um that there's some some automated um caption systems or apps i think yes i have seen auto captions and i just i have an old phone like it it helps with my brand because my brand is like a dad who kind of doesn't understand technology Uh uh-huh but is magically still somehow making it happen Yeah, yeah and um so what i've ended up doing with my own captioning is yeah as you put it very eloquently is i do suffer through the repeated looping of you know my voice telling a joke and i'm like gosh is this still funny is this still funny is this still funny um but then i do i do i have made this workaround where i will use the text as an opportunity to make another joke and yeah. sometimes yeah. it's like this one this word will be all caps or this word will be in a different font or the sentence will be a different font with a different person et cetera, et cetera. Um, and yeah so i (laughs) the simple ways to make an awful thing like somewhat more enjoyable (laughs) yeah uh very very much like um working at a summer camp where you're not given a lot of things to work with um i've been able to find workarounds with the janky app and its editing process to uh somewhat thrive i guess you could say yeah yeah that's fair and uh regarding like the tiktok community and stuff um you were telling me off mic that you've had a somewhat controversial uh talk go up oh gosh yeah so (laughs) so what happened i have no context (laughs) oh this is perfect this is i I was waiting to be on a podcast to talk about this for the first (laughs) time exclusive um Basically, there's trends where something happens. Everyone uses the trend. They go viral. Yeah. They try to kind of latch on to the, the popularity. Yeah. Um, yeah, because, you know, 20 million videos can all go viral when true. they all do the same trend. Yeah, everybody, everybody has the chance to go viral. On <laughs> uh, it's, the, it's the gold rush of the, of the, of the 20s. Uh, um, so the, the, the trend I should say, too, this, like, I really... Mm, I was just going to say, like, I do really like TikTok. I enjoy a lot of the content on there. I don't mean to sound like overly negative, but yeah, carry on. No, we're creators. We can be critical and still deeply, <laughs> deeply need this outlet. Um, so, so the trend was there's a song that begins with the phrase, I'm getting ripped tonight. And then it says, uh-huh. RIP some other stuff. I don't know all the words because I never Googled them. And I didn't watch the. Uh, <laughs> okay, so you jumped on a trend, also not having context blindly. Yes, so yeah. <laughs> that's that's the the hit or miss, if you will, of mm-hmm. my content is like I can blindly reference something and have no idea what's going on, and it can either succeed or it can be devastating. Yeah, um, yeah. and in the instance of this most recent TikTok, it was. A bit of both, because apparently the subject matter behind I'm getting ripped tonight is 
very sexual and very adult in all capacities. And so the TikTok is basically, I say the phrase, I'm getting ripped tonight. And my son, who's off camera out of the room, goes, <laughs> I don't want to get ripped. And I say, I'll rip you tonight. And he says, oh, don't rip me. <laughs> yeah. I did see it. Oh, my yeah. God. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. this is the controversial. This is this is making sense. What yes. happened? Yeah. So it, basically in the comment section, um, you know, you look at something that has the most likes on it. And if it's like. You did the, the the joke funny, good good stuff. Then like my brain just kind of like tunes it out, and it's like whatever. But then you see somebody say like, "This gives me like a weird vibe, and I don't know how to explain it." And then other people are like, "Yeah, I agree." And then I have to do the work as the influencer to go like, "Huh, what did I do wrong?" And then um, so I will be doing a formal kind of addressing it kind of video, just because that seems to be the main. Uh, I dropped the ball on that a few times where I just mm. kind of just like, eh, well, it's just, it's a video and then it's in fast. Um, but now I have to say like, no, you know what? You're right. Um, some people do find that uncomfortable and I do have to, you know, I can be edgy, but I just have to recognize that a lot of content that does divide audiences um, from me usually isn't trying to get that, uh, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to, uh, mm, my intentions were pure and, um, yeah. So basically I have to come back to that yeah. every time, every time. So yeah. yeah, yeah. There's, there's a lot of that. So like, um, can I, can I talk about <laughs> like quality apologies <laughs> that yes, I've heard online? Absolutely. Um, so from, from what I've gathered, it seems like best practices are like, uh, you know, I'm sorry to anyone who was hurt by this, not I'm sorry if anyone was hurt by this. Oh, yes. There's something very invalidating about when someone says like, oh, I'm sorry if you got your feelings hurt, because it's like we wouldn't be in this situation if no one's feelings yeah. were hurt. Right. Absolutely. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, we separate our intentions from our impact. So like it's exactly what you're realizing now of like your intentions were pure, which is fine. Yeah. Um, and like you and your kid had no idea how this would be received. Um, so that just is what it is. Uh, but it was the impact went in a totally different direction. We can never predict like exactly what our impact is going to be. Um, you know, so I think all we can do is try to add context. That's usually uh apologies that cover that sort of thing seem to go over the best yes so i don't know if that's what you've thought about <laughs> no uh you, you ended your really good advice with i don't know which usually means that it's really good advice uh, <laughs> but i don't know you know <laughs> <laughs> but you know everyone's got their own style so yeah. clark uh let's get into the meat of today's subject we didn't even do rapid fire questions i just figured i would you know, because I know you so well, I wasn't even going to do it. But um, but the listeners, they on, don't. On second thought, because the listeners don't know you as well. Rapid mm. fire. Answer as quickly as you can. Don't think about it. Um, yeah, we're dude. just going to get to know you super quick. All right. So um, pie or cake? Pie. Last thing you ate? Oatmeal. Country or city? Ooh, city. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Dance club or pub? Pub. Slap or punch someone? Slap. Books or films? Films. Vanilla or chocolate? Vanilla. How would you describe your aesthetic? Uh, secondhand, but content. <laughs> uh, what would we most likely find in your saved porn folder? Ooh. Hmm. Oh, I don't have a literal saved porn folder. So, mm -hmm. well, your bookmarks would, or oh, gosh, they're all in here, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair. Uh, I'll, yeah. I'll move on. Uh, anything you might be addicted to? Uh, attention. Wow, how did I know you were gonna say that? I should have tried to predict it. <laughs> it's like you What's... have a TikTok and you just keep posting or something. I don't know. <laughs> what is a pet peeve of yours? Um, gosh. Mm. 
Oh, we can come uh, back to it. No, pet peeve. A pet peeve of mine is um, when my son doesn't know how to take a hint. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry. Kids. He's kids. he's five. Kids. He's five. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> no, no, like I'll say, like, sorry, this is this is a tangent, but basically, he just says he'll he'll, he'll like come to the door of the bathroom, and I'll be like, Grayson, I'm pooping, mm-hmm. and then I'll like close the door, and then he'll like try to open the door, and like, Dad, I just want to talk to you. And I was like, well, about what? And he's like, Did you know a cow is a cow? And then I'll I'll die inside a little bit, but I'm also full of joy. But also I'm like I'm pooping. Anyway, sorry, I tangent. Yeah. No, no worries. We tend to just do the rapid fire until someone has to go on a tangent or tell a story explaining their answers. So that's good. But Clark, you love attention. Why don't you want your son coming in on you while you're pooping? <laughs> oh, I could I could I could talk about that. I really could. Uh, <laughs> well. You know, this is this is maybe a bit too deep, but I find that parents who crave attention and are looking for attention from their children tends to backfire on them. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it really isn't what I want. It's um, what he needs. Yeah. And, um, yeah. So I do outsource to um, adults for my attention. Um I just have like a bucket of them that I can reach into. And I say like, look, um, you gotta, you gotta look at me in the eye, in the eyes and just, (laughs) just validate me. Uh, thank you. And because I'm a really big person, usually I can get away with it. Um, but I get all my needs from dead plant. Thank you. Dead plant. That makes you magical that you can have that. (laughs) I need to throw it out, but it was (laughs) sitting in my room and you know, Robert couldn't make it today. So yeah. Uh, no, the show must of, go on. I get it. It's one thing led to another. So anyway, so summer camps, the meat of yeah. today's show. Yes. Clark, we've both been at summer camp and I got some deep questions for you that we're just going to, we're going to unpack. So Clark, what was your experience with homoeroticism at summer camp? Mm. Um, I love this question. Thank you. <laughs> um, so there was a very fun moment where during Splitsville, which is where the guys go to with, hang out with the guys and the guy leaders talk with the guys. And, you know, similar for the gals. And we were all... Gal leaders talk to the gals, not yes. guy leaders talking to the gals. Yeah, no, no, it's literally yeah. all the gal leaders talking to all the guys. The girls do their own thing. They're just like feral. Yeah, they're, they're just, just like, of, we get it. We've matured yeah. beyond this. Yeah. They can, they're smarter than us. They can see <laughs> and be like, no, no, we you know what to do. Yeah. yeah, we actually yeah. understand social interaction, and all of us guys are like, "Do sticks." Guys were like, "I have a feeling in my wiener area." Yeah, and then the, the adult ones come along and say, "Don't touch in public, bad, bad, no, no, no." Yeah, yeah, yeah. leave space for the Lord. Oh my God, we should say we went to a Christian camp. We don't have to name it, but Absolutely. yes, this is a very important detail. Uh, carry on, sorry. Yeah, well, eroticism is kind of everywhere. If it's just camp in general, but um, mm-hmm. uh, Christian Bible camp, it's very, very different, but also the same, but different. Yeah. So um, I have a very vivid memory of during Splitsville, we were all sitting shirtless in a big circle in the common room, and I, for some reason, opted to do shirtless and pantsless, and I was wearing just my boxers, and I was in the middle, and we were all going around the circle, um, telling each other or telling the group what uh, a little thing about us was. And I casually was like, I have ADHD, so maybe that's why I'm in the middle here, shirtless and pantsless. And I got a laugh out of everybody, and no one was like, ah, he's a closet homosexual. And I didn't say that, I'm a closet homosexual. And it was a good time. Um, But yeah, no, also, homoeroticism. I did fall in love um, deeply with um, someone at Bible camp. Yeah. And he wasn't able to reciprocate feelings based mm-hmm. on either his own uh, hetero way or he was in the closet or whatever it ended up being. I'm glad that I could be a part of his life and he was a part of mine. But uh, yeah. When that didn't turn into anything beautiful and flourishing, um, it did break my heart, of course. And uh, yeah, that was 
that was my my introduction to formal eroticism was with uh quote unquote we'll call them uh zach or yeah 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 totally i had a zach as well um Mm -hmm. and it's just like you know everyone goes through it i can't remember if i've said it on the podcast but it's kind of like catching the flu that comes from my older brother he's like Mm -hmm. everyone has to go through unrequited love of some kind uh so they know how much it doesn't work um Mm -hmm. you know and like you know it literally like it feels like a sickness like i have memories of just like waking up and feeling physical pain because i like longed for this person so much and i just couldn't make that connection work um and if anybody's interested i wrote a whole script about this experience like because i wanted to fictionalize it in a comic and then i had to put it on the back burner but it is available on the patreon patreon.com slash bit button if you ever want to read a script um yeah worked really hard on it and you know got through was able to work through a lot of feelings because a lot of feelings come up when um you know a closeted homosexual is like really attracted to a straight person because like uh for me it was trying to convince myself like oh i just love this person like a brother in christ (laughs) whatever that means (laughs) it's like yeah we can have this you know totally uh what do you call platonic fucking male bond when really like no i wanted hugs and kisses i absolutely wanted hugs and kisses (laughs) um but i couldn't admit that to i think i knew it deep down because i actually i think i wrote fan fiction like erotic fiction (laughs) about me me and my zach so yeah i knew what was going on but i just wasn't talking to him about it (laughs) yeah sorry you you wrote that back then as well like yeah back then oh Oh, yeah 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 Yeah. and then lately you know the story is fictionalized but there's never like you know we never consummated anything it's all a fantasy there's like fantasy sequences where you know the character that represents me is like you know just masturbating imagining like oh what 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 could be (laughs) if only behind the woodshed just like yeah yeah yeah. in a public bathroom (laughs) yeah yeah i just love holding hands (laughs) proximity is enough Uh, is this stirring up any other memories for you Mm. um oddly yes actually um so in my my present day queer journey um i'm going to be doing some drag in the very near future Oh, and, hell yeah. Absolutely. And it reminded me, because I was part of it, um, I, can, I can just give a little sneak peek. I did start shaving. I got halfway done. Um, the, uh, the, old, the old shaving of the body hair. Um, mm-hmm. Let me tell you, I have so much body hair, um, which is fine. It's me. It's my body. I love my body. <laughs> but at the same time, um, it does say something if I did half my body and then I had to take a break. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, but um, yeah. When, at one point during um Bible camp, I did shave off everything from my boxers to my neck, and I remember vividly walking to the pool, being like, "I am going to crush every swimming record um this camp has ever seen." Um, yeah, but it didn't turn into any um boyfriend relationship, and it definitely didn't turn into any uh, girlfriend relationships. Um which was um, for the best, I think. So, yeah. 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 I I would think the same thing for for my Zach as well, where I was just like, you know, it it got to the point where we couldn't even be friends um, because like uh, both his um, homophobia, but also his like weird feelings about friendship in general and just like moving from friend to friend and just like whatever was the newest most exciting friend became the most important friend so like i was able to have that for a time but then i was like you know put aside once we were living on different coasts and he had a new chapter that he was starting in his life wow um hey clark how do you feel about the ethics of bible camp or missions camp Another great question. Uh, <laughs> gosh. So in sort of preparation for this podcast, um, I was going through some old files and I found the returning, call it like the ministry pledge um, 
from the camp. <laughs> yes, you did. did. Oh, I can't wait to hear this. <laughs> I can I can send you a copy of the mm-hmm. pieces um, that I have. Um, so there's one section that says the statement of faith. And so just a little sample text here. Uh, number one, God is one in divine being, manifest in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Um, pretty standard as far as, you know, Bible talk goes. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was number one. And there was two, three, four, five, six, seven. And all of these kind of have this premise of this is the Bible, this is the lifestyle we want. And, um, you know, we got Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He was born of a virgin, lived a sinless life died for the sins of the world, was raised from the dead. This is like the statement thing. And then also in the statement of faith, it adds, um, uh, our mission is to bring the good news of Jesus Christ to others and provide the campers with the best week of their summer. And um, that that on its own is just, it seemed so bizarre because as a, a queer individual, I was like, I didn't really have, like, obviously I wasn't a camper, so it wasn't for me, um, you know, ever a best week of summer. And um, fun, funny enough, I was, my, my D&D group last night, I, I, I asked a question to, um, we'll call him, I don't know, I forget his camp name, but anyway, it was mm-hmm. someone from the senior staff, and he mentioned that it was, it was terrible. It was a terrible time. And as a camper? No, as a staff member. Which yeah, is, yeah. Um, yeah. Like I, I definitely. Okay, I'm I'm sidetracking. How do I how do I feel about the ethics of Bible camper missions camp? Um, there there were some very um, constricting moments. Um, I felt sort of the ang- the, the anxiety of. Um, not feeling comfortable based on some statements that the, the senior staff mentioned, like, um, um, you know, if a camper mentions that they might be gay, effectively the response was supposed to be, don't talk about it. Yeah. And part of what I've been talking about in therapy a lot has been, um, just the destructive power that silence has about not speaking about something and not addressing a very, very, very real part of my being. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I'm just so, so the short answer to how do I feel about the ethics of Bible camp? I wish they talked about dicks more and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> like just just like, hey, y'all, some of yous might be I'm, in my head. I want them to be rednecks. Like, I know they're yeah, not. Yeah, but like, some of yous might <laughs> be horny. Some of yous might be gay. And that's fine. But we have some cleanliness rules yeah. <laughs> or whatever. Everybody has to use the showers for showers only. And yeah. The back 40 is for hiking, not <laughs> friction. If you catch yeah. my drift. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's so fucked it's just like how do you how does anybody deal with horny teenagers yeah. <laughs> like it's such like a universal thing and yeah. you know no adult wants to be put into a position of like breaking a sexual boundary like with a teenager and at of the course. same time like if you don't talk about this stuff um, you run the risk of like somebody getting pregnant catching an STI someone mm-hmm. you know uh fucking having like being outed out of the closet or like all these like things that can be very also traumatic so like what's more traumatic (laughs) talking about sex with young people or having like like making sexual mistakes and then having a camp like shut down or like parents Mm -hmm. really upset you know but i had the the additional joy of going to a christian school as well for uh 12 Mm -hmm. of my 13 years Holy shit. Okay. I only yeah. went for three years, but that oh. was enough. <laughs> you had enough of it. I wanted more. I wanted more <laughs> trauma to talk about it. Yeah. Stand up. Um, <laughs> so the sex ed talk, um, cause, cause the Bible camp definitely didn't have like a sex ed talk of any kind that wasn't no. their, their, uh, their place. 
but the school that I went to in health class, and I, I use that term loosely, we had a nurse. <laughs> you, the term school loosely or health class loosely? Health class. Health class. <laughs> yeah. The school, it, it, it's technically, it was good enough as a school to <laughs> teach me several yeah. items about addition. It was Frank's school. shack around the corner. <laughs> I mean, school. <laughs> <laughs> We're not supposed to talk about it, Dave. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I went to Frank's shack around the corner and they brought in a nurse who effectively tried to scare everyone into abstinence. Yeah. And like, I'm not kidding. Like she was like a single mom who got knocked up on her first time having sex and she had twins. And that was her horror story was just say, I'm not saying it's going to happen to you, but uh, just so you yeah. know. I, I had, had twins, twins, and twins suck. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have any friends. I had three to seven years. I don't know. It's all a blur of just no yeah. friends and only twins. And, uh, Great. I'm sure her kids love that that's how she talks about them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Very certain. They're probably on TikTok. Oh, my gosh. They're probably, yeah, they're, they'd be Gen Z. Oh, my man. Mm. <laughs> Sorry. That's mm. just my brain. Just kind of hopeful. Full, full reset there anyway um but yeah, yeah yeah being scared away from sex and being um uh, ignored um on that topic uh deeply unhealthy so yeah totally yeah as you were talking about that a phrase popped into my mind of um neglect can be as traumatic as like you know capital t trauma mm -hmm. um because, yeah, you know, that silencing and that sense of, like, not being allowed to bring something up, like, the underlying message is, you know, if I bring this up, I will be rejected, I'll be shunned, I will be, you know, considered wrong or a bad person, um, which we talked about in the religion episode, if anyone is curious more <laughs> about our thoughts on this subject. Um, Clark, would you send your kid to camp? I... It doesn't have to be Bible camp. I would love, yeah, I would love to send my kid to camp. Um, I would just, you know, hope that he is, well, no, I, I've seen him in action. He's durable. He can handle it. Like he'll, yeah. yeah. He's uh, yeah, he's, he's like an energizer bunny. He takes a, what's the phrase? He takes a lick and he keeps on ticking. No, that's roll up. No, Timex. <laughs> I don't know. He's, he's a kid. He's, he's a kid. He'll bounce back. He's yeah. He's good. Yeah. 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 It's, it's true. I think it, <sighs> This is, you know, this is sort of in line with summer camps, but like, I think possibly I actually haven't, I don't know that many parents at the moment, but I think there's a sense sometimes that um, parents don't want their kids to make mistakes, but like, that's how we learn. Um, yeah. And, you know, probably more important is the sense that if a kid does make a mistake, their parents will always be there for them. Right. Like it never changes how the parents will feel about them, um, yeah. because I think I definitely grew up feeling like, oh, like I couldn't make mistakes or like I, I was, mm. you know, constantly like not measuring up or whatever. Um, yeah. And it still haunts me, man. It's like it's yeah. very annoying <laughs> to have to deal Absolutely. with that. Yeah, I, I like I when I look at my son and I think about, you know, what he's done that makes me, uh, you know, question my abilities as a parent mm. um you know it, it i look at well first of all he's very smart so um like he already knows how to gaslight and it's so dangerous uh -huh. um yeah he'll oh gosh he'll look at me and say like mom said that i can go to bed after video games because i was good today and i'll be in the vehicle with her and I'm like, well, is this true? And she'd be like, no. <laughs> and so like, huh, Grayson, that's called a lie. Did you yeah. know you're lying to me? <laughs> and um, so, yeah, like there's there's those things where like I want to uh, I know that, yeah, he is he is um, not perfect, but he's also um, going to make some mistakes. And mm -hmm. I do try to like talk with him as if you know in every situation you know there are some where i'm like frick i have to really dial it back here but mm -hmm. um i do try to approach every point of conflict with the, the reassurance of you know what it's actually okay to have mistakes and to understand like you want to try things out you're a kid you want to explore you want to you're a little scientist you want to figure everything out 
And so, um, yeah, I do, I do want him to experience all of the things that, um, you know, I didn't get to necessarily experience. So mm-hmm. sending him to camp would be one of those things. Um, but I would, I would have a little anxiety, of course, because it ends up being people I don't really know watching over my kid. Yeah. Um, but yeah, usually you, they got a pretty good rate of, of not killing campers. And, uh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. At the end of the day, this, he's alive. That's good. That's good enough for you. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're all, we're all here. We're all still kicking. Yeah. yeah. I, I think I, I lean toward the same response. Like I would probably send my kid to camp. I would want my kid to have, you know, lots of interesting experiences mm-hmm. that, uh, yeah, it's not even necessarily that I want him to have like him or her, or they, um, have a life that like is better than mine or whatever. I just want them to like feel free to explore what they're interested in. Mm-hmm. So like if there's a camp that lines up with their interests, like awesome. Or yeah. if it's just fucking, you know, dirt camp, go to dirt camp. <laughs> yeah. Like if there was a camp, like based on what my son likes currently, um, if there was a, a, a camp for trains and dinosaurs and oh, wow. um, Netflix production and you know just standard stuff um, yeah i, I guess would, he just wants to go to the film set for the new jurassic uh movies he wants to be on the pink fong studio reproduction <laughs> of yeah daddy shark seven uh the return <laughs> but um but um but um the return but um but um but um and uh that's so stupid i'm sorry <laughs> um i'm i'm we are we are well past the baby shark stage of parenting um fair but yeah he definitely would love to be um, part of. Oh gosh! Oh wow! Um, I I want to send him to motion capture school um, or camp. Um, mm-hmm. Like I've I've gone to I went to ventriloquism camp and that was not as fun as it was cracked out to be. Um, mostly because it was run by my dad, um, but also because um, it was not something that I really chose chose. But if he um, wanted to choose something. Uh, interesting kind of like that that was kind of niche i yeah 100 percent would want him to have that experience yeah. fair yeah. gosh do we have any other thoughts about summer camp any other anecdotes that might help people feel comforted i'm trying to think because like we did so we did video production for a couple we summers did. um mm-hmm. which was a very separate experience from a lot of uh what counselors were doing and what campers were doing um right. like i i remember we had a joke where it was like we're the video team we just watch uh <laughs> as in like we just watch other people have fun <laughs> but we had a lot of fun oh, to be honest we really it, it like set a foundation for you know my love of sketch comedy and improv and yes. whatever guerrilla filmmaking yes but it, in my memory yeah. of that it was like you know i i don't think about the price or sorry, the, the, the pay that we received. Mm-hmm. And I don't think about the conditions we worked in or the hours we put in. I only think of it as unlimited creative <laughs> yeah. amounts of just like, Hey, do you want to make videos like all day, all week? And I'm like, hell fucking yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a pretty, it, it's a pretty sick job. Like if I yeah. could just, do more of that because i think what's what was most fun about it was like there was no approval process <laughs> yes if we if, if you pitched an idea to, and you were leading it it was just we're gonna do that's what we're doing this week it's like, that's what we're doing and the kids are just gonna have to deal with it <laughs> yeah and the um, kind of idea of like well i think they might find it funny and even if they didn't we loved it that's what i appreciate yeah. yeah yeah that's so true on um on the bit button youtube channel would you be interested in just like going through? Uh, I have three, I believe. Yeah, I have three camp DVDs. Um, oh could we just do a watch party um, and Absolutely, talk shit on yes. all these skits? Oh okay, cool. <laughs> the um, the uh, the the director's commentary, but um, better basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, more so. Uh, I'm sure I would just be cringing at most of my acting. <laughs> oh, same. That's mostly what it would be. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna. I, I I know I've had very awful looks. Like I this this kind of yeah, like same. <laughs> just rolled out of bed, but put on a hat kind of look. This is mm-hmm. definitely. Um, I did just roll out of bed and put on a hat, but this take has taken years to get to. You know, 
and right. the looks and some of the acting. Yeah, no, I'm physically feeling cringing, like a cringing sensation while just thinking, thinking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that'll be fun. So look forward to that, listeners. Yeah. Dear listeners. Um, Tune in sometimes. We have come now to the fun of the show. We are going to play Dramatic Break. Um, so I have pulled up the script for Black Hawk Down uh, <laughs> uh, because Clark says this is a very dramatic movie. I'm not familiar with it at all. The goal of this game is uh, one of us will try to be serious and the other will make that person try to break, try to, you know, giggle. Um, but if neither of us are laughing, you're just in for a treat. You're just going to get some some excellent performance art. <laughs> um, did you have any questions before we start, Clark? Um, I mean, I can pick up cues and uh, kind of follow along. But, uh, okay, lovely. Yeah, yeah I'll do the... Um, Let's see the whatever the jokey person can also read stage direction and it looks yeah. like gosh there's a couple characters I'll play McKnight and mm -hmm. Thomas if you play Hoot and Struker. Sure thing. Okay cool. <clears throat> Exterior. Oh uh, uh, I'll try to make you laugh. Sure. Okay. 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 Exterior. Target building. Continuous. Struker is behind the wheel of a Humvee. Blackburn in back. Medic tending to him. Hoot and his team jumps in the Humvees. Hoot riding shotgun next to Struker. Struker hits the gas. The three Humvees take off. Interior. Exterior. The Struker Blackburn convoy. Day. Snipers on the rooftops. Fire! A hail of shots hits the trucks with a cadence, like a cadence of drums. From the Humvees, the turret men return fire. Pilla blasts away with his... 50 covering their asses what okay um i already forget who i said i was gonna play <laughs> um mcknight and okay. I'm, I'm struker and hoot okay i'm mcknight and thomas <clears throat> how are things going are things okay there struker i don't want to talk about it now colonel anyone hit uh continued struker and hoot see a roadblock turns onto another street to avoid it two other humvees following and finds himself in a killing zone complete chaos in the turret pillow continues to fire on the street and militia man spin out what the fuck there's so many typos from behind a corner and shoots uh okay you left i did laugh <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay uh no shoot. you do uh stage stuff okay uh from on the street on the street <clears throat> on the street, a militia man spin out of from behind a corner and shoots Pilla in the head. Suddenly, the view swings straight up as he's hit in the head, flops down into the Humvee, onto a stunned ranger, Thomas. Struker turns in his seat, sees Pilla bleeding on Thomas, who is hysterical. Christ! He's fucked up! He's dead. Wait. Ha oh, sorry. Wait. You're, I'm so you're Thomas. Fuck, I need to write it down. <laughs> I'm McKnight and Struker. <laughs> uh, uh, no, uh, McKnight and Thomas. I'm Hoot and Struker. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Carry on. Ooh, um, okay. Thomas. Christ, he's fucked up. He's dead. Ooh. Cut between city center and Humvee. McKnight. Struker, talk to me. Long pause. Then. It's you. <laughs> no, it's still. Wait. Oh my god. <laughs> right. I'm I was. Wait, I thought you were doing a really good long pause, and I was like, "This is. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna break. I'm not gonna break." Yeah. Okay. No. Okay. I've broken. Um. Uh. All right. I'll try it's, to make you laugh. It's Sergeant Pilla. What's his status? What's his status? Who turns around in the Humvee instantly assesses. He's dead. Ooh. He's dead. He's dead. McKnight and Steele both look stunned. Someone dead? That doesn't happen in the army. Interior. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, yes. I'll be serious. <clears throat> Interior. Matthews Blackhawk. Same time. Observate. No. The casualties aren't going to make it. Interior. JOC. Same time. Garrison glances. I'm sorry. Here. Fucking Matthews Blackhawk. Same time. And then interior jock. This this is a very gay script, and I love it. They have it. I love it. Okay, I'll be more serious again. Garrison glances down briefly, then back up. Jock 
is silent. <laughs> okay. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> a silent jock? Silent <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> um, they always make noise. Okay. Uh, yeah, you be serious. <laughs> Interior, Struker's Humvee continued. A stunned hush, static, from the speaker. Then bullets hammer the outside of the truck. Someone get on that 50 cal. Hood is already climbing up into the turret. It's mine. Outside, Hoot sights a line of Somali gunmen up ahead and on building tops. Hoot lets loose with a cruel sweep of the 50 caliber. Huge slugs blast into the masonry, dust and stone mixing with crimson splatters of blood. Interior Walcott's black cock, same time! Walcott flies above the city. Exterior Mogat, Mogadish. What? I'm done. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> Oh, this one, there's so much, um, uh, bloodshed in this scene. It's, yeah, there's it's, a lot of, there's a lot of death. There's a lot of dying and a lot of innuendo. I did not expect yeah. it. I'm all for the, the dark comedy and, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great times. Good times. In good line time. 104, the script literally goes, Moalim shouts, his hand drops and his men fire. Whoosh! <laughs> <laughs> what a goofy script. <laughs> Oh, that's can good. you believe it won awards that year? I can. Yeah. I I I'll expect or I have no expectations for what wins awards at this point. Mm. Um, you know? Once mm -hmm. let's see. Yeah, one's Green Book got was it Best Picture? Was it Best Picture? Couldn't tell you. That's the, the perks of being a dad is having no idea what certain pop culture things are most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. Best picture for Green Book is, uh, is the most questionable best picture in recent memory. Well, I'll go watch the movie now and I can offer. I'll just I'll just comment on the uh, yeah. YouTube channel. Just like oh, it's the reason. Yeah, yeah. By the way, <laughs> it's, pretty good, it's a pretty good video. I know this is totally out of context, but it's a pretty good. Pretty yeah. Good video. After seeing Green Book, I have realized that it is uh, bad. Mm. Um, no, I've just listened to a couple of reviews of it, basically saying you know it's very much like a white savior movie. It's just got a uh. bunch of like, you know, driving Miss Daisy, fucking who's coming to dinner. Um, what's the other one? The Help. You know, it's yeah. all up to the white person to just understand just how empathic um, they can be toward the plight of black people. And then they'll make mm. it all better. And it's just like, OK, literally the white savior in this movie is like a is like a dumb hick. And the black man mm. is like a genius jazz musician um, mm. based on a real person. And the jazz musicians like family and estate did not approve the script of this movie. So it's oh just gosh. like very, it's very, very icky <laughs> that it won the best picture. Um, they should have a scene where it's just the, the redneck deconstructing, if I'm not mistaken. It's just like, gosh, yeah, you know what? Yeah. Sunday school was like a little bit racist because we just didn't have that thing going on for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <sighs> I, we could go on. Maybe we'll just do, yeah. oh, never mind. <laughs> There's plenty of other YouTube videos about this stuff. Yes. Clark, Thank you so much for coming on and talking about summer camp. Thank you um, for having me. If uh, if there's anything that you wanted to take away from this chat, what would it be? Hmm. Um. Golly. Just uh, well, one. It's great to see you again. This is uh, likewise seeing your face, hearing your voice. Um. It's uh, something that I've been going through of of. My, re my recovery process um, is uh, just finding people who have gone through the similar church spaces and school spaces and recognizing that um, queerness kind of tied us together and um, in a way that, you know, hetero relationships really can't compare to and, and just, they just don't get it, man. Um, and so, yeah, I'm very grateful to have you in my life and, um, yeah, I'm going to actually go and watch all of your, uh, your bit button stuff now and, and catch up and yeah. Don't worry about the podcast. The podcasts are a real time sync, but there's lots of shorter videos that if you check out, I would not complain. Um, uh -huh. cool. yeah, likewise, very happy to have you on. I guess my takeaway from this chat is, let's see, everybody's got a Zach. 
Yes. Everybody's got a Zach. Everybody's <laughs> got a Zach. And, you yeah. know, we uh, we just grow through that experience. You know, I think if, like, if more people learn to uh, hmm, look for reciprocal relationships, we tend to be pretty well off, right? I think, mm-hmm. you know, I'm really watching for the part of me that, like, starts barking up the wrong tree when I'm like, oh, this person clearly seems not interested, or this person, we clearly don't click, who cares? I can just move on, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, That's so healthy. I'm so glad. That, uh, so healthy. I'm sorry. <laughs> Awkward ending as I talk over you. <laughs> <laughs> so healthy. So healthy on three. One, two, so he- three. So healthy. So healthy. So healthy. So healthy. <laughs> thanks again clark um like i said For before sure. you can follow clark on at john queer tractor crow Qu- fuck at john <laughs> queer tractor co on tiktok mm-hmm. uh he's very funny and just an all-around excellent presence um thank you so much for listening to tissues of the day you can follow us at bitbutton on twitter and instagram you can look up the youtube channel bitbutton if you want to watch the video version of the podcast and i mean i would plug robert's instagram but he's been replaced so just kidding you can follow robert at robert f mckay um on instagram uh thanks so much for listening and stay wet internet and stay alive. Absolutely. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Bye.